Steve here, Unbox Fresh, and in this video I'm unboxing the NVIDIA Shield TV. I'm also going to do a review of this um, because this is actually filmed, this bit here right now that you're seeing, my face, is filmed two months, two or three months after um, unboxing it. So in a nutshell, um, the controller I like and this I don't like, it's a piece of shit. Alright, so welcome to this unboxing for a NVIDIA Shield 16 gigabyte edition bought from Amazon. There is a slight bend there. I don't know whether that's uh, a thing, but I have got slight flu, tail end of flu, so I sound like shit. But we are carrying on, we're soldiering on for you guys. Pretty much just getting this for the emulation, really, The because uh, I've heard it can do up to GameCube emulation on it. So uh, at the moment I use a Wii with Homebrew on it, which has the snares and Mega Drive games on it. But this uh, is more powerful and it can sort of do one box, can do two jobs sort of thing. So I can watch Cody on it as well, the occasional 3pm Premier League football, which is of course illegal, probably somewhere, I don't know, who cares. So here we have the remote here, um, which is uh, feels much like the Amazon Fire TV one. Not, um, not a massive click sound there. Um, don't know whether you heard that or not. Yeah, it looks right already. It's got fingerprints on it. I assume that those are mine. Um, whether it's a returned on Amazon. Bit of bit of uh, fluff, bit of uh, white specks on there. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Looks like it's already been used. Uh, it's dirt on there. Dirty. Whether that's um, a standard thing with new products from Vidya. Comes with uh, dandruff. Give it a blow. Yeah, there's there's quite a lot down on here. Fingerprint marks, yeah, fingerprint marks. So on the back you've got your power, Ethernet, HDMI 2.0 uh, compatible. I think a 1.54 cable will work, but if you've got for HDR, you want to use a 2.0 HDMI cable, which is probably, I mean, they're, they're probably all HDMI cable uh, 2.0 now. You've got two uh, USB 3. That one there, apparently you connect that to your PC somehow. And that one is a standard USB 3. They're both USB 3. Um, but they haven't coloured, they're not blue coloured. So that's interesting. Get a grill there for heat. Uh, Phillips screwdriver there in case you want to open it up. I'm sure it's all proprietary in there. Got the orange glow there. I thought actually that would light up. Dirty. This is obviously dirty, this bit here. Styrofoam. That's quite a nice um, thing there. Sort of soft but hard. Here we have the uh, control pad. As you can see, it's got white specks there, bits of dirt on it. It's not exactly impressive. Usually, uh, they've obviously saved scrimped on little bags for them to stop them getting dirty. It feels quite nice. D-pad feels okay. It's probably similar to the Xbox One D-pad, maybe a bit better actually. It's quite a nice feel actually. Uh, I'd say it looks uncomfortable, but it feels nice. It's got a nice grip actually. You kind of, it's more grippy than an Xbox One controller, for example. Uh, stat, yeah, say it's similar to PS4, got little triggers there. These don't feel too great. Feel like they, the left one feels a bit crap, but I don't know. I wouldn't say it's worth 60 quid, but there we go. Yeah, you got the uh, pad there as well private listening with the remote you did have private listening but with the new one you've not got it you've just got a coin slot uh, you've just got a little slot to put rechargeable batteries in IR remote we get a sheaf of paper here quick start guide plug it into your TV USB you get a USB cable here so that's um, I assume that's USB free it's not blue um, and you you've, this is your charging cable for the uh, pad it's probably about a meter long by the looks of it Support guide, loads of different languages in here. Russian, Spanish, German, Italian, French, good old English. And we've got a little shit pop-up thing there. A little power adapters there, so I want the UK one. God save the Queen, if it comes out, there we go. Um, then we've got this. Clicks in, standard thing really. Uh, this is uh, 
whatever that is, freeze frame it and have a look. So that's probably about a meter long again, 1.5. So that was the unboxing video of the Nvidia Shield um, 16 gig 2017 model, which you can buy from Amazon. I got it uh, for about 185, I think. First of all, the box itself is tiny, takes up a similar footprint to an Amazon Fire TV. It has a cool slit of green at the front, which you can turn off. I personally have it, um, uh, I face the back of it so I can plug you know usb um, hard drives in and out um, i bought this for it as well which is for four terabyte my passport western digital hard drive which you can put your um acquired video files on and um, emulators and stuff the remote uh, i've grown to dislike quite a lot it's um it sometimes just has a mind of its own i've tried replacing the batteries which are really cheap batteries these are the batteries you want um, all the links uh, are going to be in the video description and on unboxfresh.com but I put new new ones of these in and it's still a bit crap uh, I've gone in and deleted some like preferences some bluetooth preferences and see if that helps but yeah the, the remote itself it isn't great you know I just you just want a physical remote when you press the button it actually does something with this sometimes you can wait up to 10 seconds for it to actually register press and even a bit has chipped off at the bottom of the remote there, um, possibly because I was just getting pissed off that it wasn't working. It also has a touch thing here. Um, you can disable the volume. Basically, if you do it up and down, it has a volume control here, but it's hard, half the time you, you go like that to do the volume and it doesn't register and you're like, oh, come on, and then you end up putting it full volume. So that doesn't work very well. You can disable it in settings. If you go to HDMI, CEC, you can fiddle with that and turn it off. Uh, double tap to play pause. That, so that's quite handy because obviously you, you save wear and tear on that. Sometimes it's just easier to just double tap. The remote itself is quite shallow. Um, it's not very thick. It sort of slips out of your hand like that. It kind of st just slips out like that. There's not much travel when you press the button as well. So yeah, the, the remote I don't like, it's crap. With this as well, you just pop that open and put the watch batteries in. With the box as well, there is no power on and off. You have to use the, pull the power cable off, which is a reversible connector. I think it's, I, I don't think it's USB-C. It's a similar setup to USB-C, but it is proprietary, I think. Um, and it's quite stiff to get out. So you have to kind of pick the, the unit up and just pull it out sort of thing. Um, I've only had to do that. I think once or twice since I've had it. Usually, I've noticed recently this drive, um, while you're using the shield, it registers as zero B. Um, so it's registering the drive, but it's not showing that there's any data on it. So I have to restart the shield or just pull the plug out, the power cable and plug it back in again, because there's no physical button. You know, it's like, oh, it's an always on device. Oh, it's always on, I've got a beard and I'm a creative wanker. Fuck off, just give me a physical switch, a physical button that turns it on and off. So Nvidia did say that the remote should last for 12 months, but within two months of owning it, it's kind of got on, you know, it's got a mind of its own. Also worth pointing out that the Fire TV remote, the one with voice command and the latest 4K remote, will work with the Fire, with the Shield TV. Um, apparently even the voice control works as well, but you have to set it up as a, a Shield accessory, not a Bluetooth accessory, but that should work. That's the Fire TV remote is 20 quid. This is apparently 50 quid, 40 quid. So I would probably just buy a Fire TV remote at the same time as buying the Shield and just decide which one you want to take and if you don't like the fire tv just send it back so moving on to the control pad uh, i really like it at first with all the angular stuff going on there it does look like it will be uncomfortable but actually it is really comfortable it's probably more comfortable than the xbox one remote which i find with that my fingers sort of go over the top there and they get a bit sore, give it sort of eight or nine out of 10. And the only thing is the buttons are slightly further apart. So if I'm playing Road Rash 2 on the Sega Mega Drive, um, it's kind of, you've got, to, you've got to keep the B button down and then you've got to move to the C there. So that's a bit annoying. But overall, it's a nice, it's a nice feeling remote. Um, if you can sort of see it there. 
D-pad as well is is fine. It's uh, probably better than the Xbox One. Analog sticks click in. <coughs> nice weight to them. Does look like the uh, the band things are peeling off. So I'd maybe just use one of use one of these cap things, which you can get for a few quid off Amazon. Sometimes, if you go, you know, show me a video about cats on here. It's actually linked into this, so it won't work very well. So I think sometimes it's like when you press voice on here, it's actually activating the voice, the mic on that. But most of the time, it works fine. The battery life uh, found to be similar to the DualShock 3 on the PS3. It's, it's probably about two or three weeks, three or four weeks maybe, that the battery will last on that, which is a bit of a um, bit better than DualShock 4, which of course lasts about you know 12 12 minutes I have found with this that the emulators everything runs fine on it um, up to PlayStation 1 um, I think uh, I've, I haven't got everything set up yet uh, the Dolphin emulator I've not got set up the C64 I've no idea how that works or the Dead ZX Spectrum a bit complicated but what I've got is a 4 terabyte Western Digital hard drive which um, seems to be working fine Sometimes uh, the shield doesn't recognize it, so what you do is you go, you basically just restart the device. You restart it by, you go to the home menu, hold down the back button, and then you select restart. Sometimes though that doesn't work or it comes back, the hard drive is registered when you come back, but sometimes you have to physically turn the, turn the machine off, uh, which the only way you can do is pull the power plug out, which is a pain in the ass, because you have to like, it's quite a thick grip on there. So with emulators, uh, if you get anything by Robert Brug Bruglia, what you can do with that is resize the window so you can reduce the size of the actual screen because I find that with retro games, uh, you, they're designed to be on a small screen from you know the 90s, 80s. You know, at max, a, you know, a 21, 28 inch TV. So it makes sense to reduce the size. You can do that with the Robert Bruglia emulators um, you can also fast forward as well while you're playing the game if you hold down R this r2 button you can actually fast forward the emulator so if you're like waiting for something to load you know dr robotnik comes down and you wait you know you just want to get to the action with sonic the hedgehog then you can actually just fast forward it which is great you've also got something called retro x as well it's i think 12 dollars. it's quite it's worth it because it, it puts everything into in one central location um, you can download ROMs from Retromania UK. Yeah, get, that's five pounds one off fee. So for 15, 20 quid, you can, you know, you can have a nice um, access to a ROM list where you can then download it. All. So in terms of storage, the Shield comes with 11 gigs of usable storage, which is fine for Kodi, SPMC, and maybe one or two games from NVIDIA Play Store. You can add your own internal storage as well. Um, you can get a USB flash drive. I have tried using this four terabyte USB free drive spinning disc with it, and it's is unusable. So you can only use uh, flash drives with it. Um, I did see a, I think it's like 256 gigs for like 50 quid which would still make the 16 gig model cheaper than the, the Pro version, which has a spinning disc in it. So if that spinning disc um, fails, then uh, you're fucked. So with the five terabyte Toshiba drive that I tried, a mains powered one, uh, Nvidia Shield said that only four terabyte was supported the maximum. But I have read that people with eight terabytes is supported as well. So also worth noting is that the direct USB feature does not work with Mac Pro. Um, uh, the Fire TV did. Um, the Android file transfer app popped up as soon as I've plugged the Fire TV app um, in, but it doesn't work with Nvidia Shield. You can just use, uh, you can set up a local network thing and transfer files across and or just plug in your um, hard drive into somewhere. What you can do is sideload Chrome on there and use like a pirate website and just watch like 3 p.m. Premier League games. So you can just use that. One useful thing with the control pad as well is you can plug in a pair of headphones. These are the Game One Sennheiser ones, which are really like best headset ever, very comfortable. 
um, you can plug it in like the Pia DualShock 4 and just watch um, TV with that and because of this because this battery lasts ages then you're pretty much fine for battery life overall though um, it's a very good machine um, if you just want Kodi if you just want a bit of streaming then I would say get the Fire TV one because I think you can fairly easily get SPMC on the on the Fire TV um, but overall it's it's great for retro gaming um, it's instant on as well so you can kind of come back to it eight hours later and carry on with Super Mario or something you know it's it's sort of quite useful with uh, with that regard um, and yeah it's it's a tidy tidy streamer apart from the remote which uh, is a piece of shit so there we go that's my review of the Nvidia Shield 5 Fire TV 4K HDR Android TV box of sh shenanigans